Hey guys, it's Jason the Rubber Duck. I wish I could say that I'm really excited to make this video, but I'm not. About a week ago, I uh, took the Ducati out. It was such a beautiful day, and I thought, you know, I'm going to ride the Ducati. And in order to get it out from inside my house where I store it, I have to go up a grass hill. And as I was going up a grass hill, uh, usually the back tire spins a little bit, even though I'm not on it. I'm just using the, the weight of the bike and trying to push it up. There's no way to do it. The hill's so steep, there's no way to do it without actually having the bike running and, and, and going under its own power. Well, every now and then the, the wheels slip, and it's never been a problem for years, but uh, I always worried about it. And this past weekend, as we were coming up the hill, you know, when you know it, it was one of those days where just about everything had gone wrong. I'm not sure why I even got the bike out. But the clutch grabbed, the wheel spun and got away from me and basically almost took me over. So I just had to lay it down in the grass. And you know, I've been thinking about different car manufacturers and motorcycle manufacturers. They all have really cool taglines or mission statements like, uh, I don't know, like, you know, Porsche is like Porsche. There is no substitute or Chevrolet is like Chevy, like a rock, you know, and those are, those are really cool, make you feel good about the brand. And I'm not sure, but I think Ducati is probably something like Ducati, the only bike you can gently lay over in the grass and cause catastrophic damage. Uh, it's actually ridiculous. But anyway, um, what happened when we got the bike up finally um, and brought it in and pulled off the side panel and everything and took a look um, is actually some of the, uh, on the clutch hub, the, uh, studs. There were two studs that the clutch springs mount to and they sheared off uh, just under the weight. It, it didn't even crack the fairing, but it sheared off the, uh, the clutch hub stud. So needless to say, I, I, I was kind of in a bad mood when that happened. So I didn't think, hey, let's go grab my camera and we can video this. But uh, I had to order the parts and, and they came in, took a few days. And, and so I've cooled down and I thought this would be a great video for those of you that have a dry clutch system. They're all pretty similar, um, especially if you have a, you know, a Ducati 748, 916, 996 uh, uh, in that um, family uh, like I have here on my 99 748. Um, so this would be a great video for any of you that want to replace the clutch stud, but also if you just want to replace the clutch uh, in general, the plates and the, the uh, stuff like that. So we're going to... Uh, walk you through the process and a little bit of this is going to be reverse engineered so I've ar I'm already at the point where we need to get the uh, impact gun out and take off the uh, bolt that, that holds the, the clutch hub on so we'll pick the video up there and uh, the only thing I haven't I won't be able to show you that I've removed obviously besides the body work and if you need to watch a video on how to remove the body work please please don't work on anything mechanical in, in your house because yeah just don't. But anyway, um, and I'm kidding, but, but seriously. Uh, so we'll pick it up there. And when I'm doing the install, you know, we'll put the, you can kind of reverse engineer the video in your head. Basically the, the, to take it out is just as simple as reversing the steps to put it in. It's just six bolts uh, or six screws on the, on the, uh, that go through the, uh, the clutch hub and the springs, the clutch springs. So let's get started and we'll take a look. And, uh, so the first step is obviously you're going to remove your body work. Then you're going to take your clutch cover off, and the part I can't show you is removing the uh, pressure plate, the six screws that go on the, the pressure plate up on top of the, uh, the clutch springs, and then you pull that out of the way and you'd be at the step we're at now. So we'll bring the camera in and we'll uh, get the rest of this out and uh, then show you how we're going to fix it and put it back in. Okay, so here we are after uh, the panels have been removed, the clutch, uh, the clutch cover has been removed, and the pressure plate and springs that bolt into these studs right here on the clutch hub has been removed. So what you're noticing is this plate right here. It's got two, uh, two screws, and this is called the clutch holder tool. You have to have this. Uh, you know, I, I tried a bunch of different things, you know, and, you know, trying to jerry-rig something to get in here and hold on to this and, and keep this from spinning. Um, but if you don't use this, you're going to end up doing more damage than good. So make sure you get this tool. You can get them on eBay for 40 bucks, 42 bucks. And uh, it kind of sucks because it seems so simple. But um, this will actually keep you from damaging um, anything when you're, when you're putting it back on and torquing it to specs because that requires uh, over 100 foot pounds. So, um, you know, you don't want to cherry rig something up here and then break your brand new one. So what we're going to do is once we have this installed, Here's the nut we're going after right here. It is a 32 millimeter. And the safest way to do it is to use, let me plug this in, to use 
an impact gun. It's just, just much easier to do. So we're just gonna pull that off. And uh, I actually just had that hand tight. I, I did it earlier, but I wanted to show you the step. So we, that's why it came off so easy. But you use an impact gun, take it off. And then we are going to unbolt the holder tool. We get that out of the way. And now we're looking at our uh, clutch hub here, and this is gonna come off. Make sure to keep this all together. Keep all your pieces together and put some wire on it. And then the clutch hub just comes right off. Whoop, there's a, and you'll see that right there. This little O-ring came out, so, so be careful uh, when you're taking these parts out that you're watching for everything, because that goes right inside your uh, clutch hub there. Right. Okay, so here we are at the bench, and uh, there's everything we pulled out of the center. Okay, so you just make a little tie like this so it's all on there together so you don't lose it. Okay, and just set that, set that aside with your other parts. Now, here's our hub, and what you got to do is you got to separate the hub from the, the cush drive, okay? And there's a trick. You have to get right inside here and knock this out. So I've seen guys put these in vices and everything else. There's no need to do that. It's just, you're just trying to separate it from the rubber. So what you do is you get like a 28 millimeter socket that I have here, and that fits perfectly on there. And then just get yourself a rubber mallet and just, just start gently. See how it's backing out of the back? See? So just. And it should be. You just gotta keep working it. There we go. And set it down. And there's all your Kush Drive rubbers that just came out. And then there you go. So now you've separated it. So this is the piece you can see that is sheared off. Uh, well, I got the studs over there. You can see I left, I left inside one of the springs, it just, just sheared right off. So two of them, that's what caused all the problem. So now that we've got this separated, we'll go get the new one and we'll put it and we'll just start putting it all back together. We, we and have separated the hub from the, uh, from the uh, uh, Kush drive and there's our hub. So we put that away and here's our new hub with all the studs intact. So, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that these Cush drive rubbers are in there nicely. And this is kind of a pain in the ass to do. So you want to get these, you want to get, leave as much space between these Cush drive rubbers from the sides of the fins as you can, because when you stick this new hub on it, they, uh, it takes up the, it takes up the space, but, uh, on the outsides of these things. These fins fit right inside those. So it's uh, it's pretty tight fit. So you just basically have to work it and work it and get it back together and we'll pick the video back up there when I, uh, we're just gonna put it back together just like that and we'll pick the video back up there. Okay, so we've got it almost back together. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a lip. So what I'm trying to do just gently is just keep, keep working it just Gently, see how it's going down. We're just trying to get that flush. And then once we put everything back in and tighten it all up, it'll, it'll pull it even more flush. But just, just the, the, the gentle tapping of the rubber mallet is enough to move those cush rubbers around to let, let this come all the way back down. So just wanted to show you that little step that I do. It would probably help to put something in your hand because these hurt like a mother when you when you're doing that, but uh, it looks like we're looks like we're probably there actually. So this is good, and we're uh, this is ready to go back on the bike. So we'll pick it up over there. Okay, so I'm 
then put your plate on there. Okay, and then we're going to install the holder tool back on. Okay, so now that we've got the uh, this tor torque to 190 nanometers, which comes out to around 130 foot-pounds, um, give or take about, uh, I think, 10%. So, um, you know, you can, uh, uh, you know, anywhere from probably 120, 140 would work. Um, we're going to go ahead and just remove the clutch holding tool. I, with as much pressure as I had to put on this uh, nut right here to, with the torque wrench to get it done, I, I don't think you could do this without this holding tool. So uh, I think it's going to be worth its weight in gold. Um, I was a little upset when I thought, you know, man, I have to buy this stupid tool that I can't do anything. But honestly, if you don't have it, um, you, would be, you would be severely out of luck. So the next step is to go ahead and put all our clutch plates back on. And we're going to... All right, so we got the plates. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and fit the, uh, fit the plates back in there. And as I was removing them, I made a little mark just to keep them oriented. And here's the plates right here, and they all go in a certain way. And you can see there's all the marks I made. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take them off one at a time, and this is kind of be a little tedious. But what I'm going to do and the longer we go on, just just like so. So the mark is going to be over this. So we come off, we come this way, and there's the first two. And here's your first clutch disc, and mine's pretty worn down. I'm gonna get a need to get a new one very, very soon. But it's going into the winter, so I'm not going to worry about it terribly right now. There we go. And the next one. And that's pretty much the way we do it. So I'm just going to keep doing all these and we'll pick it up uh, when I get them all stacked out. All right, so there we are with all the plates on. It's all the way stacked up there, all the, all the plates and the clutch discs. And you can see that uh, I just left the push rod intact here and that uh, the uh, pressure plate here is the last piece that'll go on there and fit. So we're just going to put that through here nice and gentle. And there we go. Now, this is what I didn't get to show you at the first part of the video, how we would take these off, the springs and the, the nuts off and take this off, but this is your pressure plate. So this is where you'd pick up after you remove the uh, clutch cover. So we're gonna go ahead and install the springs and then uh, torque them down. It's very, very light, just, just, very, just, just very gentle. Otherwise you'll snap these freaking things off. That's why two of them broke when it went over gently. So uh, let me go get the springs and we'll set those on there. and. Uh, go ahead and start tightening these down. Okay, so put our spring on and just to get the nut started. And this seriously is not going to be, we're just going to barely tighten these things up. And we're going to tighten them in a cross pattern. Take your time with this. 
Make sure you don't cross thread anything or anything else. And these springs are going to go in a lot more, but I'm going to get them all on and then we're going to cross tighten them down to where they're just hand snug. Otherwise you'll, you'll break these. So we'll pick the video up there. All right, so it's finished. Uh, we put all these in and cross tightened them uh, just like you would anything when you don't want to put pressure on one side. And these only are like seven nanometers. So I, I'm, I mean, it'd be less than a foot pound of torque, uh, I'm sure. So um, the box actually had a warning that said, hey, you know, these are only supposed to be hand tight. So I just barely just, just cinched them with my uh, Allen key and uh, all right, guys, this is the moment of truth right here. So uh, we'll see if uh, we can fire it up and uh, it goes in gear without uh, without grabbing the clutch. So far, so good. Whoa. All right, so uh, looks like we did it, we fixed it, and uh, that's how you do it. So uh, any questions, comments, make sure you leave them, and uh, I'll try to get back to you. Until the next video, see you right back here inside my garage.